L.S. and J.J. Coupling. A general Hamiltonian for an atom looks something like this. The first term is due to the central field approximation. The second term is due to the residual electric field, not taken care of in the central field approximation. The third is due to the interaction between the spins of the electrons and their orbital motion. The last term is due to everything else. We will neglect this. LS coupling In LS coupling we assume that the residual part of the Hamiltonian is much larger than the spin orbit part. In which case our Hamiltonian becomes this. The spin orbit part may be added later as a small perturbation. This Hamiltonian commutes with the orbital and spin angular momentum operators, as well as their Z components. In the case of LS coupling we can find the orbital angular momentum. By summing the orbital angular momentum of the individual electrons. And likewise with the spin angular momentum. The total angular momentum is then the sum of these. JJ coupling In JJ coupling we assume that the residual part of the Hamiltonian is much smaller than the spin orbit part. In which case our Hamiltonian becomes this. Which commutes with the individual total angular momentum of the electrons and their Z components. In this case it is only worth defining the total angular momentum which is given by the sums of the individual angular momentum of the electrons. Applicability LS coupling is more applicable with light nuclei. JJ coupling is more applicable with heavy nuclei. Thank you for watching, any feedback is welcome.